Hey, welcome to it. This is the Ascension Football Show. I'm Joel Villafana. Sport is played on the field. Players perform to the best of their ability. High performance, peak performance. The science of sport comes to TNT. Do you know we have a high performance analyst born and bred right here in Toronto, Tobago? Anthony McConnell is here. But I think that is something that is important, especially for one, let's say second segment of the fitness to keep your body going. That is all I ever want to tell you. A, a professional footballer, to play football, that is all. All right, guys, welcome back to it. The Ascension Football Show continues here every weekend. Be sure to catch us when you can. All our social media platforms, please follow us. So, as I said at the top, we have a born and bred high performance analyst right here in Grand Tobago that has been doing some good work with his company, 361 Degrees. He is actually a former national hockey player and hockey coach. His name is Anthony McCarthy. Those in the sporting world may know him. But over the last five years or so, he's been doing some fantastic work where the science of sport is concerned and is now bringing it to football, hopefully. We have him here with us. No one else that could explain it better than the man, Anthony McCann. Mr. McCann, welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I, I would have interviewed you in your hockey, with your hockey <laughs> hat on. But for persons who may not know you, Anthony, yeah. um, so, I mean, hockey, hockey was your first love as, as, as sport? As a sport? Um, that's a good question. Um, firstly, I was a national table tennis player. You before played I became, table tennis too? Um, field hockey, yeah. Right. I was in table tennis first. Mm -hmm. um, my brother, most people in hockey fraternity would know Albert McCann. Um, Baba, as they would call him, um, was in the hockey field more. Um, and I, he came up on it and said, you know what, let's play hockey. And I said, okay, fine. Um, I'll come and join hockey. Uh, when I did that, uh, made the senior national team. Um, before I made the junior national team, um, when my first turn was to Cuba, the uh, Pan Am Games, um, and then after that we were the junior team. Remained on the team um, for approximately 18 years, playing for Trinidad and Tobago, um, acquiring a gold, silver, and a bronze um, at CAC Games. Um, went to the first indoor World Cup ever qualified for um, in Vienna. I'm um, under the coach, David Francois. Um, I retired at that point, again. <laughs> um, and yeah, that would have been my career. Attended Commonwealth Games, um, two Commonwealth Games, Pan Am Games, as I said, CAC Games. Um, and also then went into coaching through Annette Knott, right. who then was a development um, officer. Both at, yeah, at but don't race ahead of me too much. Because <laughs> I want to get, get the link between <clears throat> talk, yeah. talk, talk. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and then deciding just yeah, going on to a hockey field and, 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 and yeah. developing as a, as a national player? Yeah, my, our neighbor at the point in time in Marva was Jeffrey Wilcox, who was also an, a national hockey player. Um, I'm a very competitive individual when it comes to sport. So playing table tennis, yeah, it was nice having fun, made the national team. And then... Um, you were national team tennis players? Yeah, right? under 16. Mm -hmm. You uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then my brother, well, Baba, as you'll say, um, used to use me as a guinea pig. So, um, called me out in the, in the garage at home and doing his skills and, and, you know, more or less embarrassing me. Yeah. And I, I don't like embarrassment. So, I said, okay, fine. Um, I started to train on it because I didn't like it. Um, and at the point in time, I was in school. And again, um, Fergie, as we would call him, Ferguson, um, was the then captain of the school team. Uh, and then we were brought on to play. I, mean, I remember playing on Fatima grounds um, for school, between Fatima and us and whatever, and, you know, Trinity and different school. My school was Trinity College, Mocha. Um, and from there on, you know, I developed, and my brother started to say, well, you know what, why not come and try, try a free national team? And I was like, eh, okay, I'll just try it. You know, um, I love sports. I played all sports. I played cricket for the school. Um, football for the school at uh, the lower levels um, and stuff. So table tennis and all the different sports. So I love sports. And I said, okay, fine. I'll try out this hockey thing. <laughs> and wonderful, whatever reason, uh, I made the, the zonal team. 
Uh, at that point in time, I had North Zone, South Zone, East Zone. And I made the North Zone team. Um, alongside Rafael Govaya, D, Neves, all these names, you know, in hockey. Um, and then from there, I was selected onto training squad for the national men's team. And made it um, onto the team. As I say, from there on, I just never came off. Yeah, so hockey, not, hockey wasn't necessarily a first love. But no. it, was, it was the sport you excelled in. Yeah, exactly. Tennis was my first, and yeah. also I loved playing football. Right. You know. Um, you were any good or...? or I played at the junior level for the school. Right. I was good, I was good. Right? I was a small goal man. Me I was a small goal, goal, goal man. Too, right? <laughs> I was a small goal man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I loved yeah. cricket too. I you know we played cricket. We right. played all this for the school. But hockey know, was but the sport you excelled Hockey was the sport I excelled um, Making a national team and going on to represent yeah. the, the country. Yeah, I think it was because of all the different sports that we were playing made an athlete out of us. Some yeah. of us, you know, get an athlete and not necessarily specific to sport. Yeah. So the yeah. attributes kind of fell in line with, with you know, with, with hockey and it, it, it took off. Yeah. Um, you you transitioned smoothly into coaching after after your playing career. It was, yeah, uh, it wasn't a smooth transition. I, I, I saw, I saw the, 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 the that was that was a decided not decision to push me into coaching. Right. Um, I think students have seen some quality, um, and and I began coaching alongside. Um, at the point in time, was with the men's team, and it was the Dutch coach Eric Verboom, um, and I was then selected to coach alongside him um, and at one point we actually qualified we had to go to an Olympic qualifier and Mr. Verhoom was unavailable uh, for want of a better word I was shown in the Lions then mm -hmm. <laughs> to go down to New Zealand mm -hmm. to coach the men's team as head coach as head coach um, we I think th at that point that was the first time we ever beat the USA um, we beat the USA down there we out of the 10 we came ninth <laughs> You know, you're coming up against New Zealand and all these top teams in the world, Argentina, and all these teams were looking for a qualification to get to the Olympics. So you meet any top teams. Um, it was just an experience for us to be there. Um, again, you're looking at the likes of Quan Dwayne Brown, Dwayne Quan Chan, you know, Solomon Eckers, Nicholas Wren, a lot of these top players that were at the point in time playing at that first then. Uh, we had 11 guys in England playing hockey, you know. Um, so it was a good bunch of fellas. And, and, they did well in, in a competition of, of that nature. Again, the first time to be the USA at that, at that point in time, USA was always a stickler for us and stuff like that. Um, so it was a good, it was a good run, you know. Your, your love for sport over the years and your involvement in sport, Mr. Makano, yeah. what did it teach you? Um, one to be patient <laughs> and humble, um, and to live up to challenges. You know, I think in my life, sport has brought a lot towards it in the sense of challenges. And being able to overcome challenges, you know, um, it gives you that drive and that energy to, to want to succeed in everything that you do in life. Uh, might not be immediate, but at least have some sort of succession at the end of the day. Uh, and sport has done that for me. So it's taught me some discipline as well. Um, and, and it has transcended into coaching. The way I deal with my athletes, the way I understand athlete um, comes first. You know, athlete-centered, we call that. So I'm an athlete-centered coach as opposed to a coach-centered coach. Everything is about the safety and well-being of the athlete and, and for them to be able to prosper and go forward. Um, I think that's the main thing for me, um, how I deal with it. So that human resource relationship tends to come from me playing the sport and being humble. When, when, when you look, as you said, the transition wasn't smooth no, as, you, was as you would describe it. <laughs> but, but when you look at the transition yeah. from being a player, a hockey player, I mean, how long you played the sport professionally? For yeah. 18 years. 18 years. Yeah. Um, and, and as I said, it, sometimes it's not always easier. I said, no, when you put on your coaching cap yeah. to now deal with players, what, what, what that transition yeah. was like for you and what did that, what did that teach you? Um, I think um, I had to change because, my... Because not every, not every player yeah, is a coach, coach, coach correct. Coach, yeah, and yeah. I think that's where I had not saw something in me yeah. um, that maybe alluded her to be a coach, you know. Um, but what I said it, it, it had done to me is that it brought a challenge. And remember I said, as in challenges in sport, you tend to always want to be successful. I have changed over the years as a coach many times. Behavioral um, attitude towards the game, attitude towards officials, you know, attitude towards the players. Um, you know, when you come in as a coach and say, well, you know, it's my way or the highway. Uh, and that's coach-centered coaching, you know. And then I've recognized that, you know, some athlete-centered, give the athletes an opportunity to have a say. You know, people might look at me and say, but, no way, that, that's wrong. And I say, no, that's right. Um, I think they've then believed that they have an opportunity of, uh, of what is happening on the field 
and they have some sort of internal responsibility. And therefore, what happens on the field becomes a part of them. Um, you know, we always look at the Jose Mourinho and the Guardiola's and ask yourself, okay, how we get... Yes, you have good players. But the majority of the work that is done is off the field. It's that athlete-to-coach relationship, that athlete-centered behavior that they always... They don't really speak much about it. You know, they have good players, but they have another side to it that, that we don't see. Man management, they, they, Correct. they, they call it something Correct. behind the scenes. And that's, yeah. that's, the, that's the key to performance. You know, all the science and all the things, yes, is important to have and all the different things. But that management, as you say, man management, is the key, you know. Anthony, be real with me. I want you to be very honest. Yeah. Are you a nerd? <laughs> For sport, yes. <laughs> For sport. For Are you sport. A, Trin yeah, a Trinity boy? Yeah, Trinity boy. So, so, so uh, you, you would accept that you have some nerdish quality in the video? <laughs> no, I mean, embrace your nerd. I mean, if you... Academic, I would say no, I'm a content. I'm You're a, a content. content. But um, yeah, my dad it. was an accountant, right, Roman right, Meccano. Right. Right? Um, so therefore, I fell into that free. But um, I'm IT inclined. I love IT. Okay, but I'm right. not a nerd. <laughs> I'm not a nerd, okay? Because I was going to, right, but you, you know, actually, I was going to fight, try to figure out because I'm transitioning here. Yeah. It's, it's not a smooth transition like your play to coach. Because I was going to ask you, how in heaven's name, an accountant by profession. Yeah is now dealing with the science of sport. <laughs> I, I really was hoping it would be, you know, you was into physics and chemistry and biology. And I want to say, all right. Actually, they, yeah. no, 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 no. I'm a business in all. I'm an accountant, as I said. Um, but I IT, love IT. Yeah. IT. IT was my thing. IT, right. IT, IT credit up right away for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I was always intrigued by it. Um, I actually had my own business as IT um, with Wilmark. I had my own business doing building computers and everything for people and stuff like that. Always loved it, um, and then got an opportunity to to link networking and stuff with it. So I actually do CCTV cameras now um, and stuff like that. That actually has an interlink to networking. So I was able to branch off um, from accounting into many different as diversification aspects of of work, um, and again, still being able to keep up with my sport. I think one of the main things being self employed um, gives me the opportunity to be in sport more. You know what I mean? Um, it has its ups and downs, as anybody who's self-employed understands. Um, but it gives me the opportunity to really be passionate and love what I do in the sport arena and really give what I, what I can to it back to the sport. So, from playing sport professionally for the national team, yeah. going into coaching, um, based, on, as I said, based on your IT background, you have now developed what is a high performance program yeah. um, through a company that you have set up called 361 Degrees. Yeah, myself and Alicia Casimir. Right, and Nick, it's, a, it's a partnership. Dubley. Yeah, right. it's, a, it's some directors. Initially, we also had Sharon uh, Bravo Philip on, on right, with us as right. well. So, so give me the nutshell good. version of what 361 Degrees is all about. 361 Degrees recognize that there are a lot of youths out here that, are on, that have not been exposed to high performance. They wait until they reach to the level of national and then decide that that's the point when they're going to have some high level interaction in a manner. And we felt as 361 degrees that that shouldn't be. I think it's important that youths now get the opportunity to understand what high performance is, what it didn't take, um, getting um, scholarships to go to universities and go out there and then recognize, wow, what is this? What is going in the gym all the time? What is training all other hours of the day? What is eating right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, we don't have that opportunity maybe at the younger level. So 361 Degrees was developed to try and bridge that gap. Bridge the gap in also skill development. And bridge the gap in, in being able to give coaches and artists the understanding that they could actually review themselves. We have different types of learners. Not everybody is able to learn by just doing, which you know is, a, is, is, is that kinesthetic person. Some people could learn by watching a video. Some people could learn, you know, in many different ways. We know the different ways of learning. And what we decided to do is listen, give all the aspects. Yes, we have phones and we could, we could film on a phone and we could review it on a phone, but what else can we do on our phone? Can I take the phone and look at the angle of a player leg when they're kicking the ball and see if it's at the right position? Can I look at the positioning of, of, of the non-kicking foot to the ball, to the, to the kicking foot? You know, where's the contact on the ball? What angle was he contact at? What was the entire body shape? Was it a straight line body shape or not? Like, <laughs> I knew you were going to do it. 
I just say, there's so yeah, much yeah. things so, that we look at, so, you know, that unable to see. So, Anthony, your love for sport, you played sport at a yeah. very high level, and your affinity and knowledge of IT. Yeah. Tell me when that connection came to recognize that you wanted to do 361 degrees yeah. and uh, literally perform an entirely, open up an entirely new world to try to be going in terms of high performance athletes. I was saying initially started one with Miss Not giving me the opportunity to coach. That was not that was the, the, coaching, start, the, the, coaching, the actual the coaching. coaching aspect. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. That that kind of started me off in, in that direction in, in the sense of changing my mindset. Yeah. Um, that was one. The other one that came about was actually with between Miss Miss Not and Brian Lewis giving me the opportunity to actually take part in the ICECP, which again is the International Coaching Enrichment uh, Program at Delaware University. The uni um, U.S. Olympic Committee and the International Olympic Committee, all three in one, where I had to f do my final in, in Switzerland um, and present my project. Um, I think there is where it began because my project at that point was dealing with anthropometric measurements in athletes and anthropometric um, development and data analysis. And I said, you know, we have a problem in mixing science with sport in Trinidad and Tobago, and not just Trinidad, but in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. We get ad hoc performances. We don't get consistent performances. Why? Maybe because we depend on just natural talent. Let's add science to this talent and therefore develop a pool, not necessarily with those who are already in that, but from the young stages. If we could develop a pool of athletes, and I'm going to say this very clearly, athletes, not players, so playing football at age five and age six is one thing. I want to develop the athlete in you. A normal thing in long-term athlete development will state that that athlete is developed to the age of 14. And at the age of 14 is when they choose the direction that they wish to go in. We choose our players at five and six years old. Come and play football every weekend. Come and play hockey every weekend. And they become this hockey, hockey, hockey person. There's a percentage of involvement in the different sports. If you look back at your life and even mine, when you were in school, how much sports you were playing? Yeah. You play everything. Everything, everything. As, as much as you could play, you play. On, on, yeah. on the August vacation, yeah, you yeah. playing, you're sweating in the road yeah. here. If them, girl, if them girls playing hopscotch, I'm yeah, going to jump in the house. Yeah, you're yeah. jumping on a tree, you're going to yeah. pick a mango. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So we're doing a multitude of stuff. These athletes now are stuck in one sport, and therefore, look at the, injury the injuries that we get. Ask yourself, types of injuries in the different sports and why? Is it because you play any sport too long and therefore muscles were developed in a certain area and not in another and therefore you're going to fall flat? You know, can we not give them the opportunity to play sports? Play whatever you want and then diversify in the age of 14, secondary school, let's say. Diversify yourself into the sport that you really want to play. But I've developed an athlete who can play multitude of sports and that's why it's the easy transition for me from table tennis the feel okay. Right. So we have a nerd in the house. Martin <laughs> Mokano is here with us. He is going to try to break down in the <laughs> simplest form how important the science of sport yeah. is and uh, how that contributes to high performance or, or, or creating high performance athletes right here in Brazil. Yes. Born and bred here in TNT, former national hockey player, former national coach, now a nerd representing <laughs> us in this field of the sport of science. We're coming back. This is the Ascension Football Show. We're going to get deep into the sport of science today with Anthony McConnell. The situation we have here is that these characters, and I refer to them as pests, right? What they are doing is destroying our country, but not on my watch. No street, no turf, no block shall belong to these cockroaches, right? It's no longer business as usual. Happy hour is over. If they don't fear God, at least they will fear Terminix. Have you considered how your methods could impact on pests across the country? I find we look after the rights of pests as opposed to the rights of the 1.3 million law-abiding citizens in Trinidad and Tobago. I wonder if Roach Ladenstown come here for the carnival if, if you'll interview me. But how could you defend one shot, one kill? What? You want me to throw a pillow at him? I didn't say that. No, well, if a roach jumps in front of you now, what would you do? Run. Oh, Jesus, Lord, Father. <laughs> Pests bothering you? Call Terminix at 672-5007 or 672-0042 or visit our website at terminix.co.tt for a free quote and consultation. Join our fight against pests. Get in the game with Ascension. 
at Magnificent Mall, number 271, Southern Main Road, Macbean, Kuva. Amanze Del Cafe. Happiness begins with brew. Lasso Frame Maritime Limited, the best in marina services. At our facilities, security checks ensures that all vehicles are secured. Our newly renovated bathrooms are always kept in a clean working order. Need repairs and maintenance? We have you covered. Our qualified workmen will get the job done. Boat storages. From our marina, you can easily push off for a family sailing trip. Or out fishing with the boys. Fun DDI experience with friends. Boat repairs, secured parking, extensive camera system, boat charters, boat rentals, down the island parties. Contact us at 1-868-634. 1653 Lasso Frame Maritime Limited The best in marina services Lives better on a boat So the science of sport is something that being introduced here in Trent Tobago and whether we're taking it seriously or not will really determine the future success of sport at all levels here in Trent Tobago What Anthony McCano 
is bringing to the table based on his background, his research, and the new company that he's formed over the last few years, 361 de Degrees, um, is something that we want to dig into. And hopefully, as I said, coaches, players across the spectrum, um, especially footballers, will take note of. And then let's, let, let's start by speaking about high-performance athletes. I think you alluded to it just before we took the break. Um, high-performance athletes, high-performance players, and a player and an athlete. <laughs> I wrote it down because you, know, you, said, you said an athlete and a player yeah. are two entirely different things. Yeah. So let, let, let's speak high-performance, high-performance performance, high-performance. High performance in itself um, has many facets. It is not just um, when they talk about sports science, people just think that it's not, you know, it's about strength and speed and, and stuff like this and, and being able to analyze that. Yes, that's part of it. A high performance team, to be honest, encompasses a nutritionist, a psychologist, a biomechanic, a video analysis, you know, the coach himself. You know, it's a lot of parts that you put together to make this whole. Um, high performance unit. There are aspects of physical ability which comes down to the natural speed, strength, speed, strength, strength, endurance, all these different aspects of physical abilities, yes? And then you have your biomotor abilities, your ABCs we call it, yeah? agility, balance, and coordination. But encompassed with that, you still have the technical and tactical side which the coach puts in. That's the development. That's the, that encompasses everything. What 361 degrees tends to bring into it is that aspect of video analysis. Mm -hmm. That the, aspect the, the of analytics part. Correct. Of it. That so you GPS, take all those aspects. Yeah. You analyze it. Yeah. So then, now I will take. So with my with, with the GPS, we could we could actually track a player on the field, see right. how much distance they're running, how fast they're running, how much sprints they're making. You know that kind of that kind of stuff we could pull off of a GPS, which is this global positioning satellite that we put on the athletes. And I mean, most people would have seen it on the on the athletes outside. Our athletes here tend not to put it on or no have it. I don't know why. Um, but I think that is something that is important, especially for one, getting to know your athlete better, getting to know if the athlete tired, if they if they're doing if they're overworking, if they're overtraining. This gives me all that information about the athlete. You know, um, we put on heart rate monitors. That gives us now that fitness side of the athlete. How fit are they? Uh, when are they into their their max heart rate? We, talk, we look at a lot of players in football that fall down with heart attacks and all these different things happening on the field just like that. You know, we ought to be careful and understand how to monitor this during training. You know, it's not just for the game, but during training to be able to create that graph of how this athlete really should be performing, if they're improving or not improving. And what can we do in training to help the athlete perform better? That's the whole aspect of, of this entire thing of high performance. You know, they have their people involved in the different aspects. And I'm saying you're going to have your trainer. That trainer is going to be doing his strength, speed, um, strength work, speed work, all the different aspects. And I'm going to say, okay, in the strength that, that you're training him or in the speed that you're training him or her, what is the outputs that are happening in the athletes internally? Can you see that? No, but we could get a reading from that. I could say that an athlete is running 20 meter sprint. You want them to sprint at 100%. But when you look at the whole thing, you're looking at their heart rate and they say, you know what, they're not even sprinting flat out. You know, they're not getting the workout that you want them to get. So we go into the science now, the nerdy part of it now. Is the athlete training what we will say, anaerobic, lactic? Is the athlete training aerobic? What do you want your training to be? I want my training to be anaerobic, lactic. And I'm saying this athlete is not producing anaerobic, lactic performance. So you need to do something different to get the result that you want at the end of the day. We look at teams and say they're not fit enough. Fitness is a broad term. When you say we're not fit enough, in what manner? Are we training the right energy system in our sports? That's something that has to be acknowledged. We talk about, you know, we just do sprints and run and whatever. Yes, I hear you. That's okay. And you say they improve. Have they improved to the level of international? Or are they just improved from a, from a base to a mediocre base? You know, how do we measure that? How do we do the research to know what is the international standards out there and what do we have to go towards? You know, we take somebody who's running a 20-meter sprint and say, you should run this in 1.11 seconds. That's the standard, let's just say, international. We know that's impossible. Let's say the, the standard is 3.58 seconds. You're supposed to complete a 20 meters in. You are running a 20 meters, let's just say, in 4.5 seconds. And then we train and we run it now in 4.25 seconds. You say, wow, that's an improvement. Well done. But then we go out there to play and they're running at 3.58. 
And now you ask yourself, but we're not fed. Well, they thought it was fed because of the fact that they just drop a time, but they're not dropping any time to match what is necessary on the outside. So what we try to do is to create the environment. 361 tries to create an environment which tells us we have researched on, this, on the sport, we have researched on what the standards are and where our athletes need to be. And therefore, now design programs. This is where the trainer and everyone design a program to get them to this. This is what you need to do. You know, and then we look at it and, and work on many things. In high performance, the first thing you would hear anybody say, we need to have a periodization plan. How much of us do that? How much of us actually create a periodization plan for you, you, you've done You've done that in terms of sports across the board, in terms of understanding different sports. And let's just, let, let's yeah. talk football. You, you've done that for football. You know what our football, footballers' peak performance is, what you need. Yeah. What it should be. Yeah, what it should be. Yeah, we have collated some data as to how far a midfielder should run, a defender should run, an attacker should run. Now, system and the way you play a game could change, and therefore it would it could switch around as to what you want these athletes to do on the pitch. Yeah. But generally, we could say, yeah, I would tell you, uh, uh, maybe a midfielder or a defender shouldn't be running more than 8,000 kilometers in a game. If I see a defender running 11 and 12, he's overworking. He's going to get injured soon. And you, 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 tell, you tell the coach that? I will tell the that. coach that. Yeah. I would say, listen, this this artist has been overworked. Um, and therefore, you got to take your time with him or maybe talk to him a little bit and figure out how, why is he overworking. Let's look back at the video. Let's see why he's overworking. It might not be his fault. It might be the fault of someone else who is not picking up their stuff. Yeah. And we could then identify that. Right, because actually that was, well, and, and we'll get down there. I want you to explain it in detail yeah. for, on your system. But, but football is a team sport. I think you were yeah. now alluding to that. Yeah. So in other words... The, 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 the effort and distance exerted by uh, 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 overlapping right back or overlapping yeah. left back would be very different from a centre back. Correct. You know, yeah, because he has up and down. So, 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 so are you able to, to, to pinpoint players and positions? What is required of the striker? What is required? You, you, you're able to do we that? We can do that as well. Um, and again, come back to the video and the strategy that the coaches have. And therefore, we could then determine what is the necessary. Um, energy system that is most prominent and needs to be exerted. So, for example, all of us need aerobic base for, in, for, for sport. We need an aerobic base. How much of that aerobic base is needed? How much of anaerobic is needed? And how much of anaerobic alactic is needed? You know, and that's where the sports change in, in relation. And therefore, we talk about in, in football, you need endurance. Okay, I hear you. And that endurance is related to aerobic capacity. And I would say, mm, maybe not. Yes, you need endurance, and yes, you need that aerobic capacity. But that's not your main energy system that you need. If you look at football, at what point in time in football are you continuously running up and down the field? So there's some met method of stop, whether the ball goes off the field or not. There's some method of, of some relaxation in the game. Okay. So therefore, do I need aerobic capacity that says that aerobic capacity says that I must be continuously working over three and four minutes continuously without a rest? That doesn't happen. So therefore, are we training the right system to tell a man, go and run 12 laps, go and run 14 laps? So I, I am hearing trainers and coaches telling you when you yeah. come. So no, 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 my team must run five laps before we start. Yeah. Doing, doing, but I'm saying the majority of the what we need in football and as well as in hockey is speed endurance. We need to be able to consistently um, run distances consistently at the same same intensity. Let me ask you a direct question in terms of what input, what direct output this would have in terms of the systems and 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 and, and, and some of the things that you're imp imp implementing here. Yeah, directly have on results. Um, I think that we, we in the Caribbean definitely outweigh many countries in skill. We naturally have skill. That's a, that's, a, that's a plus. Where our skill falls is when fitness falls. If we could improve the fitness levels up, then the skill level will match it to continue to be consistent throughout the game. And there won't be ebbs and flows. You know, we're going to be able to consistently have a rhythmic method of play. If you're not able to do that, so for example, we play Argentina, a football match. Argentina's starting game is at a high level. 
which is beyond what you are accustomed to. It will last for maybe 15, 20 minutes. And after that, it's going to fall. The performance is going to fall. So therefore, the passing is, is not going to be accurate anymore. You know, maybe I'm not able to get up all fast as I was able to get to before. Because again, we would have trained us an energy system that might have been aerobic. And that aerobic capacity gives us the opportunity to train at a consistent level over a period of time. We want to be able to burst, come back down, burst. And that burst must always be consistent to the first burst. If I do 10 bursts, all 10 must try to be the same. And not the 10th one falling way below the first one. That's the difference in, in how these athletes, how they're trained. All right, Anthony, bring down for me what exactly you do. Is it that on game day, you analyze yeah. the team, the players individually, and see what they do on the field yeah. and assess that? Is, is on, do, you, do you do your work on game day yeah. or in training? Tell me, tell me how, how the work is actually done. In uh, we do the work throughout training. Um, do training, we, we are there working with the, with the group. On game day, we are there working in a group. On the opponents, we have to do work on the group. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're not only on the team. We have to also do the opponents and actually come back to the coach with some information. So we also do that. Um, while in training, we will work with the technical staff at that point as a support unit mm -hmm. for information and stuff as to how the athletes may be developing or improving as they go forward. Um, and again, to actually give the coach the opportunity, even in the video sessions, to have shorter meetings. You don't have to go through a clip and look back and rewind a, a, a game and say, look at this. And that's our job at that point. We can going to come and give you a five-minute meeting on point with exactly what you want to speak about, what you want to look at. If there's a specific instance that you want to recur or, or look over, we can do that. If give you me want... an example. Give me some examples. Okay, so let's just say in training there's a set play for a free kick mm -hmm. that you want done. Um, we will film that because we're already in training. And now what we can do is cut that clip to say, listen, this was a good one. And what we do is then pass it on to the players on the phone. And they can actually look at it over and over and say, okay, yeah, this is set play we're talking about. Whether they name it set play one, set play two, we could actually create a video library of all the set plays and actually give to the players. If you remember American football, what do they get? This big handbook of all the plays. Okay, now we're going to give it in video form with you actually being part of it. This is what we did. You know, so when they go out and you feel it becomes part of them because they're seeing it. You know, you went, I went in a Tottenham Hotspur's um, club at a point in time. And on game day, what do they do inside the club? Every TV shows football. Every TV. They watch nothing else but football on game day. And again, it's just for the players to just get themselves in a, in a mode and in a, in a, you know, in the right mode to play. Um, what we do is take that footage and then decide from training, did we do it in the game the right way? Was it done right? Can we put it together? But the system that we have, I'm actually able to overlap. So what I'll tend to say is a dry run. So for us in, 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 in hockey or in, or in a free let's say a free kick for football, let's forget hockey. If their team sets up a certain wall in a certain way, what free kick is the best free kick to use based on where the keeper is positioned? We could actually do a dry run of many different free kicks on many different positions and then overlap that on another team playing and setting a wall in the same manner. And say, well, you know what? This is the free kick we're going to use for this game. Because this is the, this is how they set up. This is where the keeper normally is. And this is the one that's most successful. That, that much detail. That much detail. We could do that. Mm -hmm. And that comes again from doing training, putting things in place, and then being able to give the coach the information for when they're ready to play. So, so as an analyst, uh, as a high performance analyst, you are literally there with the team in all training sessions. Yeah building up to let's just say match day yeah um and and, and providing information to, to coach trainer yeah on the day um i can actually tell i can tell the coach or the trainer that guy's tired he's gonna get tired he needs some recovery how fast is his recovery so in training i would know if a guy is training 100 percent max heart rate how long does it take him to recover 30 seconds, okay, he needs 30 seconds and he back up again and ready to run. So maybe at that point in time, I could say, okay, he made that sprint, okay, fine. Look at his reading, by 30 seconds, he's back, he's ready to go again. He can make another sprint the same way, no problem. You might have another player that needs 45 seconds to a minute rest. And therefore, you're going to be looking at, if he gets two, three consistent runs, he's, not, he's going to fall flat somewhere and he maybe needs to hold back a little bit. So maybe the coach might say, okay, don't go on this run. Hold a little bit. You know, that kind of thing. And we therefore manage the players on the pitch as well. This, this sort of information is happening internationally in, in many, many teams. If you look at teams. any of the... People love to watch the EPL. If you look at them and you look on the bench, you look at the assistant coach with the iPad, yeah. 
Yeah. That's what we could provide. We could provide the coach with the iPad with the re replay the clips. He could actually look back at what's happening now and look and see where the problem was and so be able to fix so it. So that ability, as I said, now coming back to your IT, your, yeah. your IT knowledge. Um, right. That that ability in terms of match day, yeah. game playing, you monitoring what? Each player on the field? Correct. Each on, player on a, on, a, on a software, on a program? On the game day, and I'm actually coding each player as they touch the ball. Every time they touch the ball, if they have a free kick, if we have a corner, if a corner comes in, if the goal is scored, how the goal was scored, what was the lead up to the goal? Can we repeat that performance that same way? You know, we look at something, and I always relate something in hockey towards football because, again, it's 11 players on each, right? So we have something in hockey called accelerators. And accelerators are things that happen like 1v1, 2v1, eliminating, passing, overlapping players. Okay, let's just say, what was the mechanism to get the goal? Did we do an uh, eliminating pass first, then did a 1v1, then had the overlapping player who scored the goal? If that's the three accelerators, then that's what we need to focus on to be able to score again. We need to make the eliminating pass, carry on a 1v1, who's the person who's going to do that first, and who are the people on the, pit, on the pitch who can do it in what position, and then who's the overlapping player who's going to finish the goal first. If we could get that system and that sequence in order, yeah, that's it there. This team that you're playing against has a fault for that. And we could therefore repeat that consistently in the game mm -hmm. and get performance. Um, I mean, of course, 361 degrees is your company. But yeah. this is something, what, what you're bringing to the fore here, I don't think I've heard in, in national sport right. uh, for, 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 for the last two decades, three decades. I would say hockey has, it in, uh, has, has had it for quite a number of years. How, how many number from, of years? Uh, since I was coaching 2006. Serious? Yeah, we have been using the, the software and, and uh, analysis like that this. And again, through Annette Not, who had the vision of, of us getting involved through the Dutch. Right. As I say I was trained under the Dutch. Right. So, kind of understand that that was where we needed to go. Yeah, yeah. And again, having successes in qualifying for World Cup qualifiers, um, going to the World Cup in Indoor twice now. Um, again, it, it shows that it's, it has a value. So, I mean, could you say no? I mean, based on your, your involvement, yeah. especially with the, with the Olympic Committee, hockey was one of the, 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 the sports that would have used it. Is it widespread? Is, 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 is netball using it? Is, 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 is cricket using it? I don't think the, the, the sport, other sports are not using it as they should. No. And I think one is a costing thing. It's, it, it's right. costly. You're an expensive guy. The software is expensive. <laughs> 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand the, the situation, and even in the pandemic, it's even, even worse. Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I understand the situation. But again, um, you know, they say good thing not free and free yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, at the end of the day, we yes, there's a cost towards it. Uh, we try to be very reasonable um, in what we do. Uh, as you, you would have heard us say, the amount of work that we do on the outside as compared to the work we actually do on the field is so vast. Um, you know, it's difficult to charge people for that time. I mean, normally out there, an analyst will be easily thirty, forty thousand dollars. You know, I mean, I know that that's almost impossible here. Yeah, that, that's okay, because we want to be able to get people in the in the front to understand what this is about and how to get this involved, um, and and we fully understand that. So we tend to do it on a case by case basis and try to assist as best as we can, just for people to know that we have talent, so much talent here that is not being you utilized. And we just need to bring it to the forefront and add that science state, and you're going to get you're going to get consistent podiums, as we as as Mr. Lewis will say, mm -hmm. podiums is what we're looking for. You're yeah. going to get it. Mm -hmm. We are going to get it. How, how, how far can your arms stretch? Three sixty one degrees. How, in terms of in terms of, I mean, let's look, let's look at football. Let's yeah. say football. If you if you get involved in football in terms of assisting football from that yeah. scientific approach, um, IT bringing bringing proper information and knowledge to to yeah. technical styles. How, how far can your arms spread? I think the, the thing about it is, it's one thing for 361 to say, we could do this, but I think the the main thing is to educate people. Yeah, and national, people, uh, so national teams across the board from... Yeah, from we, we can work with I mean, uh, we currently have an academy in Mayaro with 70 swimmers, youth swimmers. That's I am not I'm not a swim coach, right. but we have swimmers at the Mayaro Resource Center and we have 70 youth swimmers there who are strapped up with heart rate monitor belts when they're in the pool, for me to get readings from them, to know exactly if the training is right or not. You know, this is something that they were like, they were shocked at this. What is this bringing in? But I need, to, I need to introduce you to this now, at this age, because you need to understand what this is about. You know, so 361 Degrees has tried in many ways. We had, we had a camp recently in the Easter, 
a little camp that we did, and we had futsal, badminton, table tennis, swimming, volleyball. All the difference was because we understand that we should not be specific to our sport because we want to create athletes. And to create athletes, they must be exposed to many sports at the ages that they are until 14. Is the Minister, Ministry of National of Sport, Ministry of Sport, are they um, aware of the program? We have tried to make meetings with them um, mm -hmm. to get on and to speak with them mm -hmm. uh, and to try and share what we have. Um, we are doing it through the and in a way with the Olympic Committee having meetings with them and introducing the kind of things that we can do. Um, true, even the Olympic Committee is, is also part of this project in the sense of, I said, we were bred out of the Olympic Committee in the sense of the ideas and what is what, what needs to be done. And working alongside the Olympians currently now, Aaron Prince, we were working with Aaron Prince from before with the Olympic Committee, through the same mechanism of, of science, you know. Um, so. Where it comes to that, and, and where our arms get stretched, you know, we try to bring people on board to, to teach. And therefore, if we have one in all the different sports, then I think that's a plus for Trinidad and Tobago sport and all. You know, it's not just about 361 here to make money and just trying to... It's not about that. It's about educating people that hopefully our sporting fraternity will be able to compete with those on the outside world at a level playing field. But if we don't introduce these things, then there's going to be a problem. You know, we're not going to be able to stand up to what the competition is outside, and we're not going to have the data and the information to make decisions. Yeah, we spoke a couple of weeks ago about local coaches and foreign coaches. Yeah. So we don't have to go far no, abroad to, to get a high-performance analyst. Um, he has an entire team here working. Anthony, I want to thank you very much um, for the information. I'm looking forward to the inputs that you're going to make, in the, especially the football fraternity right now. I think it's very much needed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure, no um, problem. I, I, no problem. And we want to invite you back to probably give us a full demonstration. Sure. Um, you it's know, use, use your all. IT. <laughs> nerd. 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 Your nerd, your nerd, your nerd <laughs> ability and actually show us how this actually works. We're going to get a full demonstration sure. from you. Um, that's Anthony McCarno, guys, former national hockey player, national hockey coach, and now putting his wide array of, of, of knowledge over the years into putting sport science, high performance analytic, analytics to, to, to the forefront. So when we get into video analysis, we tend to look at the, you know, the program, Sports Code Game Breaker. Um, that program in itself gives us the opportunity to do video analysis um, strategically for many different sports. And uh, what I'll try to do is to give an example as to how this looks and, and what happens. So. If you look at what we have up on the screen, um, this is something that we developed um, for Terminex Rangers, a, a football team. And again, if you look at it, um, a lot of codes inside of here, which we, we, we tend to develop to create instances, video instances for every action that happens on the field. The good thing about Sports School Game Breaker is that we also allow to take the video, not necessarily always live, but even post game and still be able to do the same action. Um, it's ideal if we could get it live, so actually when the game is going on, that we can actually give support to the coaches and the technical staff in giving them um, instances that might have occurred, um, statistics of the game that is happening currently, and therefore strategically make their differences on the field at the same time, so almost instant. Uh, I think that adds value in the current state and, and current best practices of international football football or any sport that you look at this is what happens at the back end for coaches to have that information go into the dressing room show the team a clip um, explain what it is that they want done come back out and actually execute this is the power of the the program in itself and as you look on the screen you'll see that i developed a um a code window for terminex and you'll see that in it uh, maybe not able to see but you'll see where we have things like corners could be there we have the individual players um, pictures so as they touch the ball or they have any instances that happen with them we're able to clip them directly uh, and they're able to see themselves uh, even post game even during the game if the coach wants to make a specific um, tactical change or tactical element he's able to pull that player aside look at the clips that they have been um, doing during the game and actually fix or, or change to suit we don't only look at the current team but we also look at the opponent so the coach gets information about the opponent um, what their build-up phase looks like when they have possession of the ball, how much possession they have, what part of the field they have it in, what parts of the field they're losing the ball in, 
Um, you know, these are important instances that it could have. If they have corners, if the corners are coming, in swingers, out swingers, um, this information can be relayed to the coach instantly, and therefore he or her can make the decisions that they see fit. So after the development of the code window, what we come to now is actually the clips that we're going to decide how we're going to put this together. If you look on the screen, you will see where we have used that same code window that we were looking at and now see the individual clips. The good thing about this is that we're now able to take just what we want. So the coach doesn't want to see the entire game and then have to look through, to stop, to go back. Coach wants to be specific and do exactly what he wants. He knows what he wants or she knows what she wants. And our job in the support is to give them exactly what they want. And by so doing, uh, you can look on the screen and you would now see that all the goals that this team has scored in the game, coach is able to look at that in review instantly. So we're going to look at that now. These are all the goals that were scored in the game that the coach can now look back and review and, and look and see how it's being done, what was the build-up towards it, what was the position of players on the field, were they in the right spot, you have your set place for your corners, did it go well, yes, and therefore they could decide now if they need to fix, change, anything else that needs to be done. The good thing about it is that we could also slow this down. And I could take this back as slow as I want, I could go back as fast as I want, I could look and see the angle of this guy actually strike the ball was it good from the coach perspective you know was the ball height right did he hit it at the right spot these are things that can be analyzed instantly so we can look and see exactly at the point in time that he made contact with that ball is this good could he have been better this comes from the experience of the coach now being able to analyze this and say yes this is great one timer and being able to to score so these are the good things about the program that we able to slow down any instance possible and actually let the coach analyze it even further if need be, or the player themselves. All right, so to give you an example of if it is that we are at a game live and the team is actually playing, I'm going to give you a little example as to the things that we could code at that instance immediately that can also be sent to the coach um, on the bench or, or whatever on the iPad that they're able to see it immediately and make adjustments. So simple thing as the opponents have possession in this game, uh, we're going to look and see how their build-up was, and we're going to actually see a clip appear on the screen, and then we're going to look it over and see if it matches. So let's let's take a look at this. So right now, in possession, is the team in green, and what we're going to do is actually create a clip. You'll see that some a clip is highlighted under the opponent's side, and now they're in possession of the ball, and the ball is moving. Remember, we're live at the game, and this is happening now. So I'm here at the game, and the game is going on, and we see this happening. Now the ball has gone forward. We were looking at build-up. As you would see now on the screen, there's a clip that was developed on build-up only. If at any point the coach wants to actually go back and look and see what happened in that build-up, we could easily say, you know what, let's look at this now on the game. And they're going to see exactly what just happened. And the coach is able to review. And now set maybe his attacking team different on how they press, how they play against it, you know, what he wants them to do. And he's doing that instantly at the same time the game is actually going on. Remember, we stopped after the build-up, the ball is gone, so that clip is over. One of the things that we also, um, Game Breaker is not necessarily for football only, for multitude of sports. And I'm just going to give an example of how we did with hockey as well. Um, and you're going to see a clip with just 3D skills. So again, just being specific to what you want out of the entire game to be seen. Uh, and that's what we will show. So I'm going to give you a clip now about that. So. As you look on this clip, you'll see that the, the, the girl in red just being able to lift the ball off the floor. Again, a lot of 3D skills, just throwing the ball in the air. That's all we want to see. Who are the individuals who are doing the 3D? Who is not doing the 3D? How do we defend that? And that's important to know. Where are they doing it? Closer to, to the D, wherever it is, that becomes dangerous. So now we can put you know, tactics in place to, event, you know, to stop that event from happening. Again, we can look at, as I said, multitude of sports. So now we're going to have a look at what we did, some work with badminton. So you would see some clips of badminton again. And just to more or less show you that this is the way that modern coaches are going. This is the way that they have the information when you think of things happening behind the scenes. This is what happens um, alongside any high-performance unit that you have. So we're going to take a look at this as well. Um, we're just going to look at all the points uh, that were made that, that went out, uh, as simple as it is. So every point that was lost, every point that... that you know, the player hit out for the, the court. We're going to look at it. And again, you could look at, again, how much um, just technique, right? So we can look at technique. Is she stretching or not? Should she be stretching or not? And maybe that is what causing the, the shuttle to go off the pitch. 
you know. Um, so again, it gives us the opportunity to look at that. It gives us the opportunity to look at just position. Is she able to hit the shuttle at the right height? Did she hit it at the right height or the wrong height, causing the shuttle to go off the court? These are things that we're able to do and slow down again, as I'm saying, or we could have it at live speed. So all we're looking at is basically every time that the athlete loses the point and, and what caused that. Again, this point we could easily see, was the arm in the right position? If we slow it properly, was she in the right position? Was the shuttle too far behind her head? Again, this is the coach's experience. And now making contact, is she balanced? Is she not? These are things that we look for. Was the step to move backwards correct? All these things can be defined and decided on at that point in time during the game, and the information can be passed on to the coaches at that instant. This is the power of video analysis. Pest control is a pain, but you don't have to go it alone. If you're a business that needs someone who will fix your problems point blank, go with the brand that's tested. Go with Terminix. Born almost a century ago in Memphis, Tennessee, Terminix International's mission has been to spread its innovations across the world through its integrated pest and termite management system, reducing the infestation of pests and vermin. Our Trinidad franchise neutralizes the threat of tropical insects and ensures that companies, from food production to hospitality, protect their investment and get the maximum value from our relationship. And we've been doing it well for over 20 years. Termites and pests are relentless, but they're no match for Terminix. Contact us today for a free consultation and quote, and let's introduce you to convenience. Protect your premises today. Choose a service provider that persists. Talk to Terminix. Pests bothering you? Call Terminix at 672-5007 or 672-0042 or visit our website at terminix.co.tt for a free quote and consultation. Join our fight against pests. Get in the game with Ascension. Quality for champions. Hey. Ascension! Ascension! Premium quality and style make you stand out all the time. Ascension is quality for champions. Ascension fit is always right, take your game to higher height. Ascension got the quality for champions. So everybody say, hey, oh. we wearing Ascension when we play. Ascension, quality for champions. Lasso Frame Maritime Limited, the best in marina services. At our facilities, security checks ensures that all vehicles are secured. Our newly renovated bathrooms are always kept in a clean working order. Need repairs and maintenance? We have you covered. Our qualified workmen will get the job done. Boat storages. From our marina, you can easily push off for a family sailing trip. Fishing with the boys. Or a fun DDI experience with friends.
boat repairs, secured parking, extensive camera system, boat charters, boat rentals, down the island parties. Contact us at 1-868-634-1653. Lasso Frame Maritime Limited. The best in marina services. Life's better on a boat. with brew. On Sundays, that was my favorite childhood memory. On Sundays with Mr. Paul Clark coming out, the whole community, like almost every child in the community used to come out and play football on that day. The younger ones, the older ones, and that was my favorite childhood memory, getting to come out to play on that particular Sunday to play football. To tell you the honest truth from the beginning when I actually know myself, that is all I ever wanted to be, a, a professional footballer, to play football, that is all, from birth. My favorite footballers is Ronaldo from Brazil, Ronaldinho and Zeland. To me, them is the three greatest. That, that, is, that is the best I see to me. I made my, my senior apprentice playing with Jablote. I was called up to play a friendly against Panama and coach Stephen Hart. And that was the first time I started that game in the stadium. And that was the first, that was my first outing with the national senior team. It's just an honor to represent their country as any footballer. It should be an honor to represent their country. That is all that they really should want to represent their country and represent the country at the highest level and to the best they could. It meant a lot, the world to me. Well, it was actually like you seeing your dreams coming true that you had as a, as a kid, growing up knowing you want to represent your country and then it happened and yeah. It was just fantastic. My first professional club really that I um, played with was Mapau Stars when they had come in the um, Pro League here. Yeah. And from Mapau, I went on to Caledonia and then played Caledonia and had a stint at Caledonia. From Caledonia, I played with Jablote and played some years at Jablote and had two years at Club Sando and now I'm here with Terminex Lafayette Rangers. So. Enjoying myself a lot here. You know the, the environment is a good place to be, have a good boss, a good structure, you have plans, everything go into plan only for the corona to step in the, the COVID. But so far everything going as planned and things going nice and I really enjoy my time here and would really like for when I finish in the finish here too as well. well. I play mostly center forward and left wing, right wing. I could play attacking midfield as well. And to me, my strength in the game is dribbling, running with the ball, and dead ball. I'm good at dead balls. I could kick the ball. And I also have an eye for making a nice pass too as well. So me, I would say Mr. Rajic Lachu from Caledonia, 
because in that point of time when uh, Daza had broke, broken my foot and was really considering finishing with football and that is the person that called me back out onto the scene and gave me that chance again to play again and so hats off to him and to me that is the, the, the person with the biggest impact, the biggest impact on me, the coach. My ambition will always be to represent my country at the highest level and doing my best for my country all the time. And that is just about it, that's representing my country to the highest level. And I want them to remember me as Tyrone, yeah, the, that is the player that, yeah, he just beat it and laugh and enjoy himself. It, 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 it's a joy to sit down and watch this player play. He's an exciting, enjoyable player to watch. I'm Tyrone Charles and I represent two my next Lockheed Rangers. All right, guys, just wrapping up with our coach's corner as usual. Here is Ansel Elcock. Thanks, Joel. This is the second segment of the fitness to keep your body going. Some people call it suicide. Some people call it shuttle. But it's all a part of fitness. It's all a part of leg, leg work. All a part of get there from point A to point B on top of your game. And basically, what you want to do is called suicide. So from point A to point B, time you reach to the fifth code, you want to make sure you're between 90 to 100 degrees with your pace, with your speed. All right? So you start off nice and slow. You're going from here, back here, back here. All right? You can turn, you can run, or however you're comfortable at. But every time you're going, make sure you increase your, your speed. All right? So you can come here. You can turn back, right? Because remember, you're racing going with yourself and with your mind, with your body to get yourself fit. Right? And go. Good. Good. Push yourself. Push yourself. Good. Push yourself. Good. Good. Push yourself. Good. One more. One more. One more. Good. And good. Yeah, well done. Well done. Well done. Get for me. Yeah? Breathe. We walk, you have to walk on, you can be tense, walk on air. Just like in a game, when you get tired, you have to catch your breath because they come, they keep coming at you. So you have to control your breathing, right? Lift your head, breathe through your nose, let go through your mouth, right? Take some big one, hold it, let it go, right? Yeah. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, go. Good, good. All the way back to the cones. All the way back to the cones. Good, good. Well done, good. Well done, good. I just step. Good, all the way back. Good, good. Good, well done. What's your ball? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and go. Side on, good, good, good from, go low, go low, good. Look up, look up, look at me when you're doing it, good. Right, good, take your time, watch, take your time to the end, yeah, good, 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 and all the way, all the way home, good. That was the second part, all about fitness, back to you, Joel. Hope you enjoyed the show as much as I did. Um, learned a lot, and uh, I think sports science and high-performance sport uh, here in this country, we need to take another look at it. want to thank Anthony Makano for passing through the show today and dropping his knowledge, wishing him all the best as he makes a, a serious contribution to sport in the future here in Trinidad Tobago. That's the Ascension Football Show for another week. I'm Joel Villafana. We'll see you back soon right here on the Ascension Football Show.